So I'm seriously worried now about this Oviedo side. Results in between episodes have been, well, I'll show you them, shall I? Hello and welcome back to The Real Deal. Today we've got two games for you, Liverpool in the Champions League and then Real Betis in the Spanish First Division, La Liga. Now since you last year, things, well, they they actually have been awful. We've played Eibar, Vigo and Villarreal. All three of those sides started, when we, when we started the game against them, were in the relegation zone. Uh, Eibar were 20th, they then beat us, they went out and then it was Vigo who were 20th. We beat them, but then we played Villarreal who were 19th and... Um, loss to them. So let's talk you through that. Abar, a 3-0 loss, is perhaps the worst game of football I've seen Oviedo play in this entire save. Honestly, for a team at the bottom of the table to absolutely dominate us, I think that, in fact, the three points they got from this game are still the only three points and the only points they've got in the entire season. They absolutely dominated us. Um, I'm not sure where to see it. Match stats, they had, they had six, uh, six clear-cut chances in the end. Yeah, six clear-cut chances. They could have absolutely romped us. Uh, we just played awful. Now, at the time, I put it down to rotation. We just played the Barcelona game and the Besiktas game. So I thought, okay, 20 plays a ball. We can rotate players. I think we changed five or six players in the starting lineup. Um, but clearly... It didn't work. So I thought, all right, it's rotation. It isn't working too well. The next game against Vigo, we put out like the big guns again, basically. But only managed to win that 1-0. It was a much more convincing display, I've got to say. Uh, Stat-wise, we, we, I think we dominated the stats a lot more. They had only like five shots, maybe, in that whole game. Six shots, one got shot on target. So we dominated that, but didn't really make best use of our chances. And then last game against Villarreal was just ridiculous. Ridiculous. It was one all for ages. Hans Osmanovic gets a goal in the 89th minute. I'm thinking, yes, we have won this game. But no, they score in the 90th minute thinking, oh, okay, two all. We can kind of accept that. But then Bakayoko comes out of nowhere, 91st minute to make it 3-2 Villarreal. So that was a real poor performance. And again, it wasn't great in terms of stats. It was very, very even. Uh, 20 shots to 18 shots. Like, very even possession. And for a team that are 19th and for us that finished second last season, that's unacceptable. Um, so that's now three games we've lost in the first division, where we now sit uh, ninth in the table right now after six games and nine points. Last season, we only lost five games. So we're on track to lose more this season already. And that's not a good sign. So I am worried about that. I am worried um, about the team at the moment in the league. That's not great stuff. But what I'm not worried about is our training and youth facilities. They've just been upgraded, basically. We did it at the end of last season. Uh, we, had the, we had the talk with the board. So now we've got state-of-the-art youth facilities and excellent training facilities. I think we can upgrade the training facilities one more. I think uh, state-of-the-art is the best. So I think youth facilities, that's it now. That, they're basically fully upgraded, which is great to see. This then is going to be the lineup taking on Liverpool tonight. I think we have to go five at the back against Liverpool. Um, and th I am confident in this formation. We, we, we beat Barcelona 2-0 with it. So I am feeling confident about this one. So Burke in goal, uh, the usual back three, Verba, Romero and Diaz. Kukurela and David Cameron as wing-backs. Harbo and Colono in that midfield with Adzic as an uh, attacking midfielder. Solonke as a false nine and Osmanovic as the other striker. Hopefully, this will be a winning formation against Liverpool. We need to try and get another point. As long as we avoid defeat in the Champions League, I'm confident of us either progressing into the later stages of it or into the Europa League. I think if we start to rack up two or three defeats in the Champions League, that's kind of it. We'll probably finish bottom of the group. Right then, boys, we're away to Liverpool today. Kickoff is upon us. Please, 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 can we just, you know, not don't disappoint me. Don't disappoint me out there. I don't want to worry about the team. Make me feel confident in you again, please. We start off the game, though, with an early opportunity for Liverpool as they come down their right-hand side of the pitch. Mohamed Salah out to Serge. Aurier winks on the ball into Keita. They've got a very, very good side, I've got to say. Uh, Robertson now on the ball into Coutinho. He's obviously still there because th this is the, the database from the very start of the season. He puts the cross in way too close to Burke but he just doesn't deal with it. And Mohamed Salah is there to nod it home for Liverpool three minutes into the game. Great. Not the best of starts, but we've still got a long way to go in this game to try and, and claw things back. We're not used to going behind in games, I think. That's one of the issues I think we perhaps we have. We're just not used to going behind in games. Coutinho puts it right onto the uh, Vicinius Jr.'s head. And it's now 2-0 to Liverpool in 13 minutes, so great stuff. We've got a chance now, though, as uh, Colono puts it into Harbo on the edge of the area. Into Osmanovic, who makes it 2-1, 14 minutes in the game. That's nice. We'll gain a lot of confidence from that, I think. We'll gain a lot of confidence from, uh, from scoring goals like that. I think, for me, as long as we're not outclassed, 
as long as we're not outclassed by the opposition and things like that, I'm not too fussed. And it's at the moment, other than possession, it's pretty even on the stats out there. But you would expect Liverpool to be all over us. We're quite defensive in our formation. They're probably quite offensive in theirs. As the cross comes in cleared though, but only as far as Mohamed Salah as uh, Navi Keaton out on the ball back out to the Robertson. They do find a lot of space down the wings. That's something we may need to address uh, with the formation. It is it's kind of narrow as Salah gets his second of the game on the 20 minute mark. It's looking like it's going to be a bad day for us. We are looking for an instant reply though as Dominic Solonka has been put forward, hits the post. And how many times have we seen us hit the post already this season? It's ridiculous. We hit the post against Besiktas four or five times, I think. We could have really destroyed them, I think. I, re I Honestly, if we don't win today, then I think my... I think what I'm going to be hoping for is third place in the group as, as a decent shot. Though well, not a decent shot, a rubbish shot comes in from Liverpool. I'm hoping for third in the group at the minimum, essentially. I don't want to be knocked out of European football. I want us to keep going. Uh, Champions League is probably still beyond us at the moment, I think, as we've seen drawing against Besiktas, um, currently being pummeled by Liverpool. I think third place getting Europa League would be fantastic. We're trying to come forward, though, towards the end of this half now, though. Osmanovic in towards Adic, into Dominic Solonke, who puts it in the back of the net. A lovely little fast passing move there that resulted in a goal it's 3-2 again now and that's nice stuff actually I've got to say as long as we can sort of stay one goal you know if there's one goal in it we can be a threat I've got to say another corner comes in looking for the same routine that scored earlier didn't quite happen but Winks just puts it over the bar this time as I was saying though if we can just keep one goal in it then I'd, I, I've got to say we can, we are a threat surely well it's not the worst first half in the world we have conceded three but we did score two uh, which is more than we've scored in like the past few games, which is good. Uh, I'm going to say, oh, what do I say? I know we're underdogs here, but go out there and give the fans a, a performance to cheer for. Um, okay, no, no one really cared about that. My assistant can do individual team talks, and he's not done any of them. So uh, no one really reacting to anything at half time, which could be a little bit detrimental. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see what happens in the second half, of course. Liverpool looking to come out the blocks in the second half. Strong as Coutinho puts a crossing, cleared away, but only as far as Keita and Harry Winks is shot. From a decent, distant out, to be fair, is only just high and wide. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and encourage. I don't know if he's actually do anything. If I'm being honest with you, honestly, I don't know if it does anything. But I, I like to think it does, and I like to think I'm on the sideline going, "Come on, boys, let's do this! Come on!" Well, things have gone a little bit stale in this match at the moment. I think a change maybe needed to just reinvigorate things out there. Perhaps we bring on Abel Ruiz for Salonke. Um, let's make him a Trek Batista, actually. Let's make him a Trek Batista. Um, Colono has not really performed massively, I've got to say, since joining the club, which is a little bit disappointing considering how good he is meant to be. Uh, Bedeka will come in as a deep-lying playmaker. Hopefully, that may change some things. We'll make those two changes. We may make a little change at the back, see if we can just get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more energy at the back, because we probably will need it. Although, Adzic... His free kick was absolutely atrocious. I just passed it straight to their man, although we have won the ball back. Osmanovic shoots from the edge of the area. I think should have just tried to play into Abel Ruiz, who's in a better position anyway and could have scored. But uh, at least at least it's a little bit promising. A draw here would be huge. A draw here would be huge. So I'm going to say push forward to the boys. And I am, I am tempted to change formation in the last 10 minutes or so to something slightly more attacking. We've got to go for it right now. We're losing the game. Um, and if we sit back like this, nothing's going to change. I reckon in the last 10 minutes or so, if we just try something a little bit more attacking, perhaps that may help us out. So we're going to go into tactics. We're not going to go to wingers. We're going to go to this formation. We've got a little bit, a few more bodies in the midfield and it's slightly more attacking instructions and mentality. So if we bring, if we bring Borja Fernandez on as a, as a, as a ball winning midfielder, perhaps in the middle of that. Maybe this will just change things slightly in our favour. And as soon as I do that, Kukurela gets injured and we've made all our substitutes. Okay. Well, Verba can go there. Um, I don't know why we took Romero off. We should have taken Diaz off. That was really stupid of me actually thinking about that. Um, and then Borja Fernandez may have to just come back in defence for a little bit. Uh, that's, actually, that's, that's very annoying. We've got 10 minutes or so with added time to play with only 10 men which really isn't going to be very helpful for us. So I think we can probably kiss goodbye to getting anything out of this game right now as Cross comes in. Berkey makes a good good collection from the Cross there. We can just launch a decent counter-attack from this. This could be the moment for us, although Aurea has just completely mugged us off there. Salah keeps the ball in play, puts it into their strike, who can put it into Paulinho. And uh, yeah, 
as I thought, dominated. Now, I won't lie to you, I am a little bit upset with that result. I did think we could get something out of this game. We got very unlucky with the injury there. I think we could have got something at the end if we didn't have to go down to 10 then and things like that. Cucurella then, five to six weeks with a sprained knee ligament. That's not good at all. Luckily, we have got a replacement we brought in for him, of course, um, whether he's called down there. Diego Gonzalez, I don't think you've seen him play him yet, but uh, he has played in a few games. He's been all right, I've got to say. Nothing special, but he's, he's there at least, which is good. We are going to rest these players as well. We've got four days before the Betis game, so it's worth just giving them a day's rest. Uh, hopefully... We'll pick up the win against them because we've not won for, well, two games, but only won um, and one of our last four, which isn't good enough. It is good, though, that Besiktas have drawn with AC Milan. That does give us hope in our group. Um, so our, our group currently, we're, we're third still in the group, but only Besiktas are ahead of us by one point. So we can forget about Liverpool. They're probably going to win the group now. Uh, but we're still in the race with Besiktas and AC Milan, which is nice. You know what? I, I reckon we could beat AC Milan, to be fair. Because they, they got thumped by Liverpool. When we scored a few goals against them, could have done a little bit better against Liverpool if we didn't go down to 10 men. And we did draw with Besiktas and they drew with AC Milan. So I think AC Milan could be a huge game for us in terms of getting through into late stage of European competitions. Right, for this Real Betis game, I want to try this then. We didn't really get to get, have a good look at it, did we, in the, uh, in, in the last game. So I want to give this a go, I think. Obviously, Diego Gonzalez has to come on for Cucurella at left back, which shouldn't be too much of an issue. It means that I would put Jonathan Cano, he's our youngster who's a left back on the bench, but he's injured. So Trevor Chalaber will go on the bench. We're going to bring Gene Ruiz on for a game instead of Romero, but Romero is going to go on instead of Diaz. Uh, I think I may make Solonke a target man on support. Um, although, is there much point of having him as a target man? If no one's really going to... We'll make him a complete forward on support, I think. That might make a little bit more sense. Also make these two uh, defensive centre-backs as well, just because I prefer having them as defensive centre-backs. But other than that, I think I'm happy with that. So, let's go with it then. Right then, kickoff is upon us here today. We're at home, so hopefully the home crowd will get behind us today and we pick up the win. In this formation that we haven't really used much before, we've not really given it much of a chance of 4 3 one 2 uh, it's worked very well for me in previous saves and things like that. It's always been a reliable formation for me. We've not really given it much of a chance here at Oviedo. Right now, though, it's it's not particularly working. 25 minutes into the game with no highlights and no shots, four shots to them. It's, it's, it's not looking great, is it, right now? Perhaps we just need to suck it up, stick with wingers for the league games against teams that are we know that aren't going to be as good as us and uh, and then just go for five at the back. We just, we just had an unlucky little run, maybe, perhaps, with those teams down the bottom of the table. Perhaps we just... I mean, I can't explain it. That week and a half just wasn't very good for us. And that's and maybe everyone was just a little bit upset about something that week. I don't know. Maybe someone or they all had a cold or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll work it out. Hopefully, in future, things will just get better and we just don't need to mess around with different formations. I think I'm being a bit over the top, maybe, perhaps. I'm, perhaps I'm just panicking a little bit too much. It's still very early on this season. We're in the Champions League. So, of course, uh, the pressure is going to be on there. And, of course... You know, the rotation, a lot of games, they're going to be a lot more tired than they were last season as well. But we've got a chance now to come forward through Adzic, who puts it across to Solonke, who just put it over. But that was the first real opportunity we've had all game. Well, I suppose either side of the that was the first highlight of the entire game as we uh, we now approach half time. So, exciting first half, not. First chance of the second half, though, is coming towards Real Betis, although they've just given the ball away. Now we've got a chance to counter-attack Solonke now on the ball. Plays it up towards Colonna, who's not really impressed me too much so far uh, since he's joined the club. Although the cross into the area wasn't the best. Haybo on the ball, major the area, shoots from distance. And he, the teenager from Everton, gets his first goal of the season for us. Moving us up temporarily to fifth in the table other teams have still got to play games though around us of course because no one in spain is allowed to play at the same time we needed that goal especially early on in this second half to give us a little bit more uh just give us a lift basically for the second half to make sure we get that early on is fantastic stuff it will really get rail betis down i think and hopefully we can just try and control the game from here on out another chance for us now romero's free kick played out towards uh diego the new left back diego glez is his commentary name on this apparently for whatever reason uh, adzic into habo once again the goal scorer back to salonke out to adzic adzic is shot wide though into the side netting it's nice to see a few more highlights in the second half though coming towards us uh, this, 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 maybe perhaps slightly more attacking players looking good as a great ball from Romero to Osmond, which is in behind the defence, looking for his sixth or seventh goal, league goal of the season. 
Uh, doesn't quite get it. The keeper makes a decent save from the one-on-one -on -one situation. Adzic's corner comes in. It's cleared by Matic, but only as far as Adzic. He plays it out to Ruiz on the edge of the area. Into Verba, who should have had a shot, really, but plays it out to Colono instead. He tries to put the cross in, but it goes out for another corner. Corner now for Betis, though. They put it in deep. Cleared and goes to Osmanovic, who can now try and launch a counter-attack. Adzic is up there, ready and waiting. Blue shirts now following him in. Plenty of players behind it. He goes alone, though, and Luka Adzic, assisted by Hans Osmanovic, scores a goal to make it 2-0, surely putting this game beyond doubt now. If we can score a third now, then that would be wonderful, as Osmanovic does score a third. Ver literally, all that highlight was, Verba just got the ball there. Hoofed it upfield to Osmanovic, who then drives in behind the defence and scored the goal. Beautiful stuff. We're 3-0 up now, which is great. I'm ready to make some changes. Harbo is going to come off uh, for Badeke. He's looking a little bit tired out there. Uh, anyone else looking overly tired? Both fullbacks are, so we'll bring Diouf on. He's actually meant to start the game rather than David Cameron, but he's going to come on as a fullback. So they're the two changes that we'll make. Well, I've got to say... That was uh, a relief, actually, winning that 3-0. Second half performance was fantastic. First half, a little bit dead. But uh, this second half performance has been wonderful. We thoroughly deserved the win today, and we needed it, definitely, after those poor games that we played against. Well, Vigo still bottom of the table. Uh, Abar currently drawing, I think, so or have drawn a game, so they've now got the fourth point. And Villarreal seems to have won a nil. Or they, drew, they were on two points originally. They beat us. They must have drawn somewhere else along the way to get six points. So it was, it was disappointing to lose to those teams in between episodes but great to win here 3-0 against Betis. Next episode then is going to be I think we're going to do the second AC Milan game. We're going to miss that one because it's very very soon. We're going to skip that one the away game but then we're going to come back for the home game against AC Milan and also do Real Madrid at home as well so that'd be very exciting. So thank you very much for watching today's episode. If you've enjoyed it make sure you do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and I will see you next time for some more real deal action.